What's up, you guys? What's up? What's up? What's up is where is my goddamn phone? Okay, so first of all, it's about to be real talk, but a bitch can't find her phone. <sighs> Hold on, guys. Okay, so I mean, I couldn't do, I could have looked at my computer to read the email, but I really wanted to read it from here. So you guys already know it's Real Talk Wednesday. Wednesday, I got me a nice cold caramel iced coffee, caramel iced coffee from my favorite place in the world. Well, it ain't my favorite place, but it's my favorite place to get some iced coffee because y'all know I don't fucks with Starbucks, okay? Mm -mm. On top of that, I don't fucks with Starbucks because I don't know the Starbucks lingo, okay? And every time I go in there or when I used to go in there and I didn't know the fucking lingo, they be looking at me like, and you want a coffee? Bitch, I don't even drink coffee. I like iced coffee. But if I'm saying I want a large, could you stop screaming venti at me? I seriously thought when the bitch kept screaming venti at me, I was like, no, I just want an iced coffee, a large, a venti, a venti. I was like, what? She kept saying it. And then when she finally said what the fuck it was, a large or extra large, whatever it was, I was like, okay, you could have just said, okay, like, you don't have to really correct anybody. If you know I wanted a motherfucking large, then just say okay and just keep it pushing. Did you have to scream fucking venti like six times to me to make me aware that the shit is called venti? In America, it's called large. Shit. I don't know about Starbucks lingo. A bitch has not been trained on that. I have too much important shit in my life going on that I don't know. Then they got the secret menu. Like, I don't, I'm not good with secrets. I don't like keeping them. And bitch, I don't like you keeping them from me. So all the secrecy with Starbucks and shit, y'all could keep that. I'm going to go to Dunkin' Donuts where they got everything on display. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the shit to be out there and open. Plus, I was raised on Dunkin' Donuts. So, you know, it's the East Coast thing, really. Mm-hmm. So they don't really have a lot of them out here on the West Coast. No, and I'm not from here, but a bitch do like Dunkin' Donuts. But anyway, so you guys, I want to tell everyone thank you so much for all the birthday love and shout outs that I got last week. I'm so happy. Like, you guys, I love you so much. Like, seriously, thank you for all the birthday love. And as I was reading the comments, okay, listen. Listen, bitches, listen. Okay, so my husband, he popped up in here. He was supposed to be at his school work because he goes to school and it's for refrigeration. But anyway, um, he got home early and he popped up on me. I was surprised to see him. Y'all all like, oh my God, you glowing up, big smile. I looked at the video and I was like, oh my God, why the hell am I cheesing like that? Like when I edited it, when I edited the video, I really didn't pay it no mind. But then when I looked at it after reading the comments and then my husband had said to me, he was like, yeah. He was like, that's why I told you don't unedit it. Just leave it because you look so cute. You just want everybody to know that I was all happy to see you and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I love you guys. I appreciate the love. I don't know about glowing like because I had on some highlight, girl. But yeah, he does make me very happy. All right. He does. But jeez, I didn't know I was smiling that fucking hard. Like I look like a kid that just got a new toy. Like seriously, like I didn't want y'all to see that side of me like that old. But now nah, I'm just fucking with y'all. I'm glad y'all see my really, really happy side. I, I'm a very happy person 90% of the time. But yeah, so I'm the big four five now, 45, and ain't nothing new except for this fucking patch that, you know, these patches are so hard to stay on. And I know y'all is probably like, bitch, why is your hormone patch on your arm? Well, by your elbow. Well, because it was on my back, but it somehow came off and I just put it on last night. So I was like, let me just put it here because, you know, as I stand under the shower, you know, it gets wet. So I said, well, I don't be keeping my arm like this under the shower. So maybe it'll work out good for me right here on my arm. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. I'm about to put a band-aid over that shit and um, see how that holds. But I don't really want to be outside with a big-ass band-aid on my back or my arm all the time. You know, I'm really trying to wean myself off these fucking patches. I've been trying this cream and I've been trying other things that you ladies have been, you know telling me to try, suggesting to me. But it seemed like every night I just keep waking up about five times in a cold sweat. And it's the worst. By the time the night is over or by the middle of the night when I've woken up like four in the morning, 
and you see me in the morning, my husband be like, oh, girl, because I be butt naked because I take everything off because I be so hot. And so that that be his moment to just no, I'm not here for the goods. I'm here to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going through hot flashes. But yeah, that that be the worst time for me. But anyway, you guys, you know, I'm back. I don't really have nothing new to, to share with you guys. I got my RPG show wig back on. Girl, let me tell y'all, I have like my favorite wigs and this one is definitely one of them. I think like any RPG show wig that I get is like, because they have the bombest lace. Like you don't even see this as like a wig. Okay. For real, you would think this is my hair, but they have like the best wigs in, in, in like the world especially since they revamp, revamped themselves. They have like the best wigs ever. But also, you know what I'm saying, my braid wig that I took off, girl, let me tell y'all, that wig was so bomb. It stayed on my head for exactly a week, the way I put it on. And this one has been on there too since Friday, okay? And it is now Tuesday and it has not moved, okay? Let me tell y'all. So I'm let me tell you, I love that braid wig so much. It made my life so much easier. And I took it off to wash my hair and it's still in amazing condition. I was going to put it back on, but I figured, listen, I'm about to get a new one. So y'all be in store for that because Fabuloski hair has some amazing wigs. Like seriously, she has some amazing braid wigs. Okay. And they look so natural. So if you guys have been shopping around looking for a nice, realistic, natural looking braid wig, then I really would suggest checking them out. Fabulosity is hair because they have like the best and I have tried many and I have seen many. And this one is like the creme de la creme, like the best of the best. Okay. The best of the best bitches. For real. So make sure you check out Fabulosity's hair. I will be doing a new video for a new braid wig this coming week. So you guys should see it next week. I will definitely post it up for you guys. But yeah, she has a beautiful wig. And I'm also coming out with my new braid, with my own line of braid wigs, which is just one wig. And it's going to be the April wig. And I'm pairing up with Fabulosity hair because who else to make a nice April braid wig? It's going to be a style that I rocked like since I was a little kid. And as an, and as an adult, it's not a little kid style, but it's a very old style that somebody tried to bring back, but she got a lot of controversy, but it's the Bo Derek. And, um, I always, my mom stayed getting my hair braided in that style with my own hair, but this time around, we're going to do a braid wig and I think you guys are going to really like it because they put a little twist on it. But anyway, so let's get into this real talk because I had to take my son to work. If you guys got a real talk that you need me to talk about, then make sure you send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put your, in the subject line, put real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people in the video that I'm talking about, then let me know that you changed the names. But if you don't, then girl... Listen, 99.9% .9 baby zaddies, I will change it for you. So let's get into this. I'm loving this wig. Girl, look at this ponytail. Whoa. Mm. Hello. This is like, this is my favorite, favorite wig by RPG Show. For real, it is my favorite, favorite wig, okay? And listen, I love this wig. Plus, I got this other one that they sent me, but it's not for a video. It was just a test. It's their transparent lace. So I didn't have to make a video of it. I just had to try it on and tell them about how I felt about it. Listen, if you got the coins, just put the money away. Just once buy a wig from RPG Show. I promise you. I mean, the prices are high, but out of all the wigs that I have ever worn, they have the best lace. Like, I would not kid you. For real. They do. They do. But I do have a lot of other wig companies that are like right there next to them. So, you know what I'm saying? So, let's get into this real talk, girl. Okay. Huh? 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 What? So, this is basically some friendly advice, okay? And these are the two emails that I'm going to read today. They some friendly advice. Y'all girls, I'm going to say girls, ladies, I need some real talk emails. These are my last two. So if I don't have any real talk emails this week, then there won't be a real talk next week. Okay. 
I mean, I'm not going to make shit up just to be on Real Talk. That's not what I'm going to do. So anyway, hey, Diva, you have helped me a lot in the past. And I'd like to thank you for that, April. I fixed my issues with my mom and we good now. Today, I'd like some advice from you as an experienced YouTuber. I remember your very first channel. I really admire your work, the consistency with your videos, your connection with the Divas and Devos. This proves how professional you are and that you put your heart and soul into this channel. Let's begin. I live in Ireland. My blog and channel are not that big, but I'm still noticeable to other influencers, companies, um, and such. Companies and I have a solid fan base. I have a part-time job, but try to make my social media work as my only source of income. I have been having two main issues. These are her issues. One, Brands, brands not taking me seriously. I get like one to three business proposals a day, so it's not bad, but most of them are shops that don't like the fact that I charge money for my work online. They try to send me four pieces of shitty quality clothing, especially the Asian stores, or three lipsticks and force me into making a video or a blog post. I will not pay my bills with any PR packages. I can't pay my bills with any PR packages. I even try to charge for the events that I attend, but to be honest, no one pays like this. How to be more professional so that how to how do I be more professional so they take me seriously and pay for my work on social media? I don't want to be rude to anyone. Maybe I should get some type of a manager question mark number two her next in her next issue influencer influencer relationships i can ramble for hours in a shortcut these people are no friends talking behind everybody's backs trying to steal someone's content and brand deals talking shit about each other to the pr people um, I once had an influencer friend and she did me so dirty. She was like a sister to me constantly in my house, around my business, on my IG pictures. But one day she stole my PR contact list. She said a whole lot of shit behind my back to these people. I am so tired of it. Going to an event where all these bitches pretend to love each other and do shady things afterwards. They do everything for fame and likes on IG. And the brand trips are the worst. You spend like 24-7 with influencers you can't stand. Everybody's filming, snapping, tweeting, and pretending like we love one another. Babe, sorry for such a long email. Can you please tell me and other divas how you deal with companies with other influencers and with other influencers? Is anything in this social media world even real? I love this job, but some things just make me so unhappy. Thank you for your hard work and for being always true to yourself. Um, I'm just going to call her. Nancy. P.S. You're killing this braided wig. So perfect and natural, queen. I told y'all. So Nancy, I actually helped Nancy before. And I know I know Nancy's email because it sticks out to me because her email used to actually be another influencer's YouTube name. Okay. But this influencer changed her name to Jackie. Uh, well, that's her real name anyway. But her old YouTube name used to be something else when she first started out. Like she said, my first channel. This is not my first rodeo on YouTube, okay? I've been around for my daughter is 11, almost, I've been around for a little bit over 11 years because my daughter be 12. So this is not my first channel. This is actually my third channel. My first two were hacked. So I've been around for a minute when people were not doing wigs. Like there was only one black girl on YouTube doing wigs, which was Atia. Okay, if you guys remember her. And my best um, my best friend, Love Kisses. Also, Robin, she was doing videos. And then I came into the game. So we made it a little bit more acceptable for wig reviews. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no wig reviews like that on there. And we started doing things with lace wigs that, you know, because lace wigs just came out. So a lot of old videos, I still have them. And from time to time, I will post them, you know, just as a proof. Like, bitch, y'all think y'all doing that got to be glue shit. We already done did that. You ain't invent nothing new, sweetheart or sweethearts, okay? So a lot of times, like, what Nancy's saying, how do I deal with, like, influencers on YouTube or brands and shit like that. And this is, this is not even just for those people who want to start a YouTube channel. This is for in general in life. Okay. So basically with the companies, how I deal with them, I have, a, I already have shit written out. Okay. So if you guys ever want to start a channel or any type of platform where you want to be seen or noticed or even make income from it, you need to have shit written out in stone. And when I started YouTube, it was for me 
an outlet because I am not a very social person, but I am, meaning I don't really like to be out in the crowds. I don't really like to be at big gatherings because it's just me. I don't really like to be around a lot of people. And it has nothing to do with people in general. It's just that I'm just a homebody person. You know what I'm saying? I'm an introvert person. I don't really like to be in crowds. When I'm around like big gatherings, I kind of get in the shell and I feel a lot of times awkward. So me being in like big scenes and like on PR trips or brand trips, I, I mean, I would go, but I would only go if somebody was with me, like if I had a friend that was close to me, because I probably would cling to them more than I would probably cling to like other influencers, because that's just not my thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like people, don't get me wrong, but I don't like the fake shit. And I don't like oh, all that. Just miss me with all that shit. I'm good. I'm good. Um, But for me, I mean, because when I first started out on YouTube, my very first couple of videos, I tried to sound so professional, you know what I'm saying? Like, unlike myself. Like, I'm not saying that I'm not professional, but I tried to sound like other people on YouTube. I tried to sound like, hey, hi, my name is April, and thank you for joining my, t my channel. Like, I was talking like that, and this was like my first videos, my first few videos, because I seen that this is what other people were doing. So let me just follow in their footsteps. And let me tell you something. First of all, the number one key to, to doing anything in life, I don't give a fuck if it's radio, singing, TV, comedy, a job, people, dealing with people, be yourself at all times. Don't try to be nobody but yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I realized, like, you know, after probably like the third or fourth video that, yo, I can't be Sarah. Penny? No. Oh. I can't be Sarah. I got to be April. And if nobody don't like me for being who the fuck I am, then I'm sorry. You don't have to watch me. It's not really that, you know, it's not that serious. And I just realized, let me just be myself. It made life so much easier. When you're trying to be something that you're not, it's so hard. Like, for real, it's seriously so fucking hard. You know what I'm saying? That's like me trying not to curse all the time. I do try, but you know what? I'm going to say a bad word. From time to time, that's just me. That's 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 me. Not saying that it's a good thing, but I'm being myself. So when it comes to just doing YouTube or social media, I just be myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm just this is me every day, all day. I'm I'm not obnoxious, but I can talk loud sometimes. But I'm a very nice person. You know what I'm saying? I'm very pleasant and I'm very humble, and I'm just myself. And if you don't like me for my silliness, because I I'm I'm very silly, and I'm very serious at the same time, then if you don't like me for those things, then I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? I'll come on here and I'll switch up my accent because this is me. This is what I do at home and anywhere. This is just, this is me. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, granted, I might be 45, but bitch, I'm not dying. I'm not dying. Everybody got to have some fun. So when it comes to YouTube, you know, the first thing or anything, be yourself at anything. Be yourself. Don't try to be like the bitch next door. You're not her. You're not ever going to be in her footsteps. Be you, bitch. As for, like, companies and stuff, like, you know, I already, I already have everything written out. Like, so when you want me to do a hair video, a big company or like AliExpress or Amazon or just companies that already have a following, customers, big companies like that, I have shit written out for them. This is how long it's going to take. This is what I'm going to charge you. This is what you'll get. And if you want it before this date, then you can pay this amount. You know, this is what I give you. However, for those who email me, like you say yourselves, because I've had many ladies on the Insta on YouTube on contact me via email asking me or basically telling me, you know, I follow you on YouTube. I love your channel. I just started my own business. How much is it to do a video? I don't charge for shit like that because for one, we all start out somewhere. This is the one important thing you guys have to realize. Regardless of what, we all started somewhere. Regardless if it's from the bottom to the top, you started somewhere. And that's still the bottom. Whether you all the way up here, but you're trying to get even further. 
Okay, you're trying to get even further on the top. So you started still at the bottom, regardless of where it was. You started somewhere you want to you want to be on top. So we all started somewhere. So you got to look out for those who helped you arise. You know what I'm saying? Like with you guys, you guys have helped me rise. And whether y'all think so or not, y'all have because y'all watch my videos. Y'all show me love. Y'all show me support. So it's because of y'all that have helped me rise. So why would I charge anybody who has watched my videos and love my videos and support me and they just started their own business. Why would I charge you? To me, that's, I don't feel like this right. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like that's right to charge someone that has been following you, has been supporting you, and they trying to get their name out there. You always got to help one another. It's all about helping and supporting one another. Now, don't get me wrong. These big wig businesses, these big hair businesses, you damn right I'm going to charge y'all because y'all got like mad customers. Why the fuck you think you can't pay me that little bit of money? You could pay me that. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you still, whether somebody buys from my video because of my video or not, bitch, you got the name out there. I got your name out there and shit. So therefore, you're going to pay me. Especially, look, you got an AliExpress store, or eBay store, or Amazon store, whatever motherfucking store. You been in the business. You in located in motherfucking China. Okay, we know you got some money, okay, or wherever. You got these big businesses, okay. I don't give a fuck. You got a website with mad businesses and wigs on that people be buying. Bitch, you getting charged. But for those who have been watching me for years or just in general who support me, I'm not charging. I can't see myself doing that because I started somewhere. And if it wasn't for anybody or anyone on YouTube or social media, then I wouldn't be where I'm at. So that's the number one key in my book to success for me is I support everybody who supports me. Okay. Not saying that I'm going to get, I'm going to say, Hey y'all just email me and I will just do y'all videos for free. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? For those young ladies who be supporting my channel and reach out to me, you damn right. I'm going to throw you a support. I'm going to do a video for you. Why not? Fuck. I'm getting views out of it. You getting your name out of it. It's, we both winning regardless. So, you know what I'm saying? And also with this YouTube, some people take it way, way, way too seriously. Like they take this shit to heart. Like I take it to heart too, but I don't take it so seriously to the point where I'm like jumping through hula hoops and shit and doing shit just for views. I'm not doing that shit. I'm not about to stand outside and embarrass myself or anybody else by doing a video. That's not what I'm going to do. And I see a lot of times that's what people do. I'm not going to get on, t on the, on the, on the, on the, and start twerking with my ass out and shit like that. I'm not doing shit like that because at the end of the day, I got a family, I got kids and I got myself. All right. And I'm not about to stick, stand outside the box and humiliate not only myself, but my family and embarrass myself. So I don't do certain videos for the views. I do shit that I feel like is, you know, professional. I'm not about to stand out here and make a jackass out of myself and a spectacle of myself. So I don't do vi the videos for the views, you know, saying just to get all the attention and views. I do shit because I enjoy to do it. And I guess if I enjoy twerking on a screen, I probably would do that too. But I don't. I don't enjoy embarrassing myself. And I damn sure don't embarrass, um, enjoy anybody to talking shit about me. So I don't do videos like that. But I feel like that's like the number one key. You have to do things that make you happy. You don't have to do what everybody else does. You know, some people tell me, well, what won't you do with this person? Because it's trending. I don't give a fuck what's trending. If it's trending, then go ahead and watch it over there. I don't have to follow the trends. And it might help me. But why would you want to do something that everybody else does? Be yourself. This is the whole key is what I'm saying. The main focus of doing anything in life is to be yourself and feel good about what you do and do what makes you happy, not what everybody else is doing. Now, as for influencers on YouTube and how do I feel about them and getting along with people that's on YouTube like other video YouTubers, influencers, I don't fuck with anybody on YouTube. That's, let me tell y'all something. I don't fuck with anybody on YouTube and I've never fucked with anybody on YouTube. The only person that I fucked with on YouTube was Love Kisses 99, which is my bestie and also my other bestie, Shay Love. Okay. And I speak to both of those females to this day. I don't have friends like that on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, I've tried that. I had a young lady who lives out here, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, she lives out here. She moved out here. She came over a few times to my motherfucking house and... 
I really wanted to be friends with her because I don't have any friends. So I felt like, okay, you've been Instagram messaging me. You've been sending me DMs. You said you was moving out here. Okay, I'd be more than happy to introduce you to the area and become friends with you. Great. But then when you come to my house, all you keep asking me is questions about my YouTube channel, how I got to this, how I got to that. How can you do that? I don't like shit like that. I'm more than willing to help you out, but you ain't about to befriend me just for some fucking non for some for some purpose of your own you know what i'm saying that's some shady shit that shit i don't do so what did i do i cut the bitch off stopped returning her calls didn't even message her to fuck back because i don't have time for that shit if you don't want to be my friend on some real shit then we don't have to be friends because but bitch i'm not about to give you my motherfucking secrets because i don't have none for you too the only thing that i can tell you is i'm just me i'm april this is me all day every motherfucking day and if you can't take it for what the fuck it is then bitch i don't know what to tell you but maybe that's maybe why people like me and maybe that's i don't know I really don't know, but I'm just me and this is who I am. But I, I will say this. You can't befriend everybody that's on social media and that's working YouTube. You see all these motherfuckers that be friends on YouTube and then like five months down the line, they, they not friends no more. I'll give you a prime example. Jeffree Star. Now, at first, I was following Jeffree Star. You know, I was following him. I liked his videos. It's kind of cool. But then I started noticing, well, Nikki Tutorials was his friend, and she was on his videos, and now she's not no more. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Manny Makeup Artist was his friend, and now she's not. Man, excuse me. Now he's not no more. Hmm. Lauren, or whatever, Laura Hill, or whatever her fucking name is. That was his friend. Now she's not anymore. I can go on and on and on about how many friends he done had and then how many friends he done blasted on YouTube and talk shit about them. So it's not worth it. Everybody on YouTube is here to get ahead. And that's the whole game for everybody. That's why you cannot be friends with everybody on YouTube. If you ain't start a channel with them, then bitch, you don't need to be friends with them. We can be acquaintances. See, people take things into, people think, take things the wrong way. Friends is not friends. They are motherfucking acquaintances. You can't be friends with every fucking body that you meet. They are called acquaintances. I see you when I motherfucking see you. You know what I'm saying? Some things you have to lead to yourself. That's why y'all don't see me collaborating with nobody. I did one collaboration video. One. And that was with some more love. And I've known some more for years. Okay. That's the only reason why I did a collaboration video with her is because I known her and I know what type of person she is. She's a good person. So I have trust in her and I have faith in her. And we went, we worked well with each other though. We weren't in the same surroundings, but we still was able to work together and form together. And let me stop lying. I also did another collab with Love Kisses when I was at her home in New Jersey. But that's because we friends. And we became friends when I first started YouTube because I had questions and she had questions. So neither one of us was famous. But her, I don't even want to say famous. But we weren't that known. But we grew together. You know what I'm saying? We grew together. So we weren't competing with one another. So I don't look for friends on YouTube. I haven't gotten many inquiries in my DMs, like on Instagram. Well, oh, you're moving here. I live out here. We could be friends. No, bitch, because you probably might want to borrow a bundle. You're not about to borrow no hair from me. So I don't think we need to be friends. I try to find friends that don't even know who the fuck I am. And, and I still ain't got no love. Meaning, because I don't go nowhere too much often. So I'm my friends are all like family based, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't really seek out for friends, but when I do have a friend, I really prefer her not to know me, not to know what I, what I do in life. Like my bestie, Rebecca, who lives here in Avondale, Arizona with me. Um, well she didn't live with me, but she, she, she and I became friends because her daughter and Mumsy were in the same class and they were the best of friends and they wanted to hang out with each other and they introduced us to each other. So that's how we became the best of friends. And we have so much in common. Like seriously, we had the same minivan at the same exact time. We had the same exact mini Dotson, my dog Coco at the same time before we passed away. Our home address is the same now, meaning mine's is 11317, hers is the exact same, but different streets. We both have five kids, except for I have two boys and three girls. She has three boys and two girls. And they're all kind of like, well, they're not the same age, but you know, understand? We have, and we both like to do crafts. So we have a lot in common. And she even was a motherfucker too. All right. So 
we have a lot in common. And she didn't know nothing about me. When I went over to her home, she didn't know what I did for a living. She didn't know what I was into. And then when I told her what I did, she was interested. Like, oh, she was interested and not really interested. And then later on, I showed her. And she was like, oh, okay. But she she not into that kind of stuff. We was already best of friends. So, you know what I'm saying? Now when people see us together in public and they see me, oh, Martha Donna. How you doing? I'm with my bestie right now, girl, please. And I speak to people, I do, and I speak to them and I introduce them to my best friend and I keep it pushing. But I don't seek friends from YouTube. That's not one thing I do. You cannot seek friends from social media. And that's what the problem is. A lot of times people seek friends and validation for people because of what their status is. Make your own motherfucking status, sweetheart. Build your own your own empire. Do your own motherfucking thing, okay? This is how I got ahead. I don't collaborate with people, even though it probably would be nice, but the type of person I am, I'm set in my ways. And I just feel like this. This is for fun for me. I enjoy to do YouTube, okay? Yeah, I, I do get income from it, but I enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? It is my outlet. I get to I get to talk with you guys. And sometimes I do ramble on a little bit too much. Okay, I can admit to that. But it's my outlet. I'm able to make friends. I'm able to talk to you guys. I'm able to show you things that I like. I'm able to save you guys some money by buying wigs or clothes or whatever. This is what I enjoy doing. So this to me, it might be income, but it's what I like to do. It's my little hobby. I enjoy myself. You know what I'm saying? And I this is that's all I can say is basically you have to just enjoy what you do. But as far as being friends with influencers, it's not like, it's not a main, it's not an importance. It really isn't. You have to start off on your own. You have to build your own empire. You don't need people in your business. You don't need people riding your coattail. You need to do this for you. You need to be yourself. And for companies, yeah, there are so many influencers out there that charge. Sometimes when you're not that big of an influencer, you have to start off with just taking free products. You have to start off with little prices and then you gradually build them. You know what I'm saying? This is how it works. That's what you do. You know what I'm saying? I don't really attend a lot of shows and events because that's just not the thing that I like to do. Yeah, true indeed. I would like to get myself out there more, but I feel like I don't really want to be around a lot of these influencers because a lot of times there are a lot of bouginess. There's a lot of fake shit. There's a lot of side eyes. And the type of bitch I am, bitch, if I see you side eyeing me on any given occasion or being disrespectful, I'm, I'm going to read you. I just keep to myself. As for the brands, you know, like I'm, I get a lot of companies that, you know, they always trying to get discounts. Like if, say my price is $200, 200 or 300, let's say 300. I want to make it like a good amount because I'm not pricey like that. But say it's like $300. Oh, well, you want to make a discount for me? I get try you a hundred, you charge a hundred dollars. Nah, man, we're not doing no $200 discount. That ain't a discount, bitch. That's highway robbery. You know, if you want a discount, I'll give you like $250 versus 300 But we're not about to go. You're not about to steal me because I can't fucking make no stir-fried wigs for dinner. Okay? So, you you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to be negotiable with companies, you know, because you got to get ahead. You can't just say this is what it is and this is what it is because they're not going to fuck with you. You know, you got to be nice. Don't be rude. You got to be nice. You got to be, you know humble humble but the number one key to youtube okay or any fucking business is be yourself now if you a bitch and a mean bitch and a nasty attitude you might want to change that then then that's where it's like don't be yourself okay but if you are you know what i'm saying a normal person be yourself people like when you self when you be yourself they don't you know what i'm saying i i have nothing listen let me tell you i went to an event an rp at rpg show event in New York City last year. And I told y'all this on a real talk already that I seen some of the um some some influ influencers there and some of them, you know what I'm saying, Jazzy um Jack, Miss Jazzy, Miss Jazzy too classy. I've been friends with her or associates with her through YouTube for years. So it was great to see her. But there are some newbies to me cuz they knew to me that just ain't got no class and think like they are walking on cloud 9. And I don't remember the girl name. What is her name? Little light skin girl. She be doing videos. She got a little wig line. Okay. I can't remember her name. She was at the event. See, that's how irrelevant she is to me. But Raina Ray Miss I don't know, something with a R, whatever. 
Anyway, she was there at the event and she walked around with her head in the clouds like she was just too motherfucking good, okay? Um, and I was introduced to her and then, you know, she she's taller than me. Shun look kind of like gave me the side eye, like, bitch, I'm old enough to be your mama. I'll smack the shit out of you in this motherfucking event. And then you'll be running out of here with that wig twisted around your goddamn neck. Don't fucking ever look at me like that. But this is what I'll be talking about. Those are, there's influencers that are like that. And then they feel like they God's gift to this earth. Bitch, you ain't nothing but a motherfucking YouTuber. Not saying that you ain't important, but you're not God. I don't care if you Beyonce. You not God. You not. You are not better than nobody else. You bleed just like the rest of us. So I, I get it. That's a lot of the reasons why I don't like to go to places like that because some of the influencers are very uppity and it's like, sweetheart, you put on some lipstick and you think that you good because you put some lipstick on your lips on the gram so you think you good and better than anybody. At the end of the day, sweetheart, you live in a house just like me and you got to fucking bleed and piss and shit just like me. So let's get it straight. And for me, the uppity shit, I'm not cool with. I'm down to earth. I'm cool. I'm nowhere near bougie and I'm just April. So the main key to to success for anything, motherfucking bitches, is be yourself. On YouTube, okay. Like, I don't really try to make a lot of friends through YouTube because, you know, things can be a little wishy-washy. And sometimes it's like, I don't really want to make too many friends through social media because sometimes it becomes a headache and it's like a competition. And really, we're all here to just be ourselves. I think, like, when you don't, when you're doing something and it starts to frustrate you and upset you and it brings you to a place where you really don't want to be, then I really honestly think that sometimes you got to step back and just, you know, woosa. Not, YouTube is not for everybody. The market is saturated. It's not for everyone. And for those of you who think like, oh, you're getting all this glamorous money. Let me quit my job. Please don't think that. Please don't do that. Okay. I just think like for just life in general, I think like it's always best to just be yourself and enjoy what you do. Sometimes people do things for the money. It doesn't have to always be about the money because some of the things that we do for the money is not the most enjoyable thing. And I'm sorry, but if I'm doing a job and I really hate it, but I'm getting paid buku amounts of money, I'm really not going to be that interested in the money like that. Like I can't go to a job or do something that I dislike only because I'm getting paid for it. Like in the long run, it might work out for you for a little while, but after a while that shit will eat you alive. Trust me. I've had a job like that, that I worked 11 years for a senior VP for healthcare. And, you know, I, I would go to people's homes and give them Medicaid and sign them up for child health plus and insurance. And I like that part is because I enjoy going to people's houses and reaching out to them and helping the community because I know how it is. You know what I'm saying? I have come from that rough life where I needed food stamps. I needed social services. I needed Medicaid. So I understand and I could relate to these people. The ones that I couldn't really relate to the most was the people that worked at my job job. Like, you know what I'm saying? Those were the uppity bougie people. And after a while, after 11 years, that shit tore me apart. Like, they didn't want me to be senior VP anymore. They wanted me to be a manager. I'm not about to sit in nobody's office with y'all motherfucking uppity bitches and uppity bastards all day long. Now I could just either do what I do or you can get rid of me. So they fired me after a while, you know, and they hired two new people to take my spot. They split my pay in half. Okay. And gave it to the two new people. Yeah. So you know, it's hard sometimes out here in this doggy dog world, but you know, it's all about growth. And I think like with everybody, we all here to help one another. And for me, I can say this. I don't take YouTube that serious. When I say I don't take it that serious, meaning I ain't about to let you fuck with me and piss me off and have me on here acting all belligerent and crazy on YouTube. Granted, Trust me, I've had my moments. I have had my moments when I have gone off on quite a few people on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to look back at it. And then I'm like, yo, you just played yourself, April. But then it's like, you didn't really play yourself. So there are some things that I just don't let go. So if you you like, oh, well, how do I deal with it? Let me tell you something. It's all about respect. If you disrespect me, I'm going to come for you. I don't give a fuck who you are, how old you are. If you disrespect me, I'm going to come for you, okay? Now, there have been a lot of times when I have ignored many comments, okay, and, and videos, and but then there's the people that, you know, we got these, these, we have females who just like to start shit. And I'm sorry, if you look like Shrek and Fiona, you know, Shrek and Fiona, Happily Ever After, whatever that fucking movie is, Shrek. 
Shrek, if you look like Shrek and his wife's baby, but you have no room to talk. You have no room to talk, bitch. Don't even say shit to me or about me. I mean, I'm not saying because you ugly, you shouldn't talk to me. But don't go on my video, my picture, talking about what's those spots on your face. Now, we all know they freckles. Now, you're trying to play me. And then talk about, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking, what is she talking about? Oh, she's talking about my freckles. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? Yo, you're being real disrespectful. But why your eyes look like that? They're contacts. You know, and then we, it's like shit like that. So I got to go back and forth with bitches over shit like this. And the thing I don't like the most about negative comments to me, when I go back, when I come for you, because you already came for me, why do I constantly get, oh, how you going to be coming? You too old to be coming for me. So there's an age limit on coming for somebody. So if you diss me, I can't diss you back. Because I'm 40 and my, I'm in my 40s. But you 20 and I can't come for you because I'm in my 40s. But you just came for me. You Are you mad? Because, bitch, I got a whole lot of roasting skills from 40 years ago that I'm about to hash out on your ass. And you ain't really got too many. You don't like how I'm coming for you, right? Like, this old bitch can't really come for you. Sweetheart, let me tell y'all something. And this is for everybody. Let's not get it fucked up. Just because I'm in my 40s don't mean I can't come for you. Especially if you done came for me. And I've gotten this a lot of times. Oh, you too old to be acting like that. But you too young to be acting like that. Is that what it is? You can act like that in your 20s. But when you're 40, you can't come for somebody when they're talking about your kid or talking about your teeth or your freckles. Like being disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even the way I come. I think it's like how I do, how I go about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You come and you comment. And when you, when I look on your page and you look like Shrek and Fiona's daughter, and then I take your pictures and I put them all over my Facebook and Instagram and blast you, then you get mad. Talk about, well, I never liked you. I don't like you no more because your teeth, you got your teeth fixed. I've heard shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So some things I... I have had a lot of comments that have really hurt my feelings, okay? And not even really hurt my feelings, but kind of like hurt my feelings. And I have had comments where, bitch, you really serious think that I'm going to get mad because you're talking about the spots on my motherfucking face, you fat, ugly, nasty, fucking crusty, smiley face, eyebrow bitch? You really think that I'm giving two fucks about what you said? I'm going to blast your picture all over my motherfucking social media. I do shit like that. You know what I'm saying? When when I feel like it. But for the most part, I don't really allow too many of the trolls to upset me. I don't allow too many friendships to come from social media because I know sometimes where it can lead to. And I just be myself. Okay? I just be myself and I have fun with it. And if you cannot have fun with it and you cannot be yourself, then it's not for you, sweetheart. So... On that note, let's get into the next video. So as I was saying, this video today is just like some friendly advice. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like, oh my God, like that. It's just some friendly advice because that's what it's all about. This is about life. So next real talk. And I hope that this, I, I really hope that what I'm about to tell you guys is going to help somebody because I have been through this and it, you know what? I'm going to just read it and I'm going to explain to you. Hey, April. Hope all is well. My name is Kelly, not my real name. I wanted to write you today to get some help about my teeth. I have been watching you for a while. Excuse me. This is her very first email for a while. And I know you have had a lot of dental work done and I'm so afraid of the dentist and have been told I need lots of work done, but I am so afraid of what they will tell me, um, which is wrong with my teeth. It's been a year since I was told I need to have some extractions done. And I finally scheduled a consultation for March 5th. I was told my teeth are in bad shape from not properly caring for them. I am a grown 35 year old woman with jacked up teeth. I feel as if I should be ashamed. How do I get past the embarrassment to get the proper care I need? I'm afraid my teeth will fall out and I am too cute to not have teeth. How did you get the courage to move forth with the process? Also, money has been an issue as well for me. I am planning to use some of my tax refund for some of the work, but I am afraid I am not able to pay for everything. I guess I'm looking for some words of encouragement to help me through it all. Now, that was her very first email to me back in February, and I went ahead and I did that video, okay? I went ahead and I read that video. Now, she sent me an update, so here's the newest one. Update. 
Hi, April. Thank you for reading my story. Hearing from so many people in the comments who are dealing with teeth issues and encouraging me to go to the dentist made me feel a lot better. I went to the oral surgeon on March 5th, as I stated in the first real talk, and it went good. I was supposed to get my wisdom teeth removed plus a small piece of tooth that was left from a previous extraction. I also needed to have another back tooth removed due to being badly decayed beyond fixing. They were charging too much and my insurance was terrible, so I waited till I started my new job with better insurance to go to another dentist. I found a place where I can get everything done in office, including any cosmetic work I may want done in the future. I went to my new dentist on May 23rd, and it was not as bad as I thought it would be. I do have some gum issues, but my dentist stated that if I continue getting my cleanings every six months, my gum should be fine, and that he was not worried about my teeth falling out. LOL. My previous dentist made me feel so bad about my teeth like they were the worst ever. I go back June 13th to have my two extractions done, along with um, bone grafting to preserve the socket in case I want implants, which costs $4,000. If I if it were my front teeth, then I would pay that in a hurry. But no one can see the back, so I'm good on implants for now. I'm so happy I'm taking the first steps to getting my mouth back healthy. I turned 35 March 29th, and I'm going and I'm too young and sexy to not have teeth. Plus, I'm I may be back on the dating scene too. But that's another real talk. I'll save it. Thank you so much. So this is what I'm talking about. I love when I get updates and I love that my stories can help somebody. So as you guys know, or maybe some of you don't know, I have been having issues with my teeth and not really anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe a year and a half ago or a little bit over a year ago, you know, I had, was it a year ago? Hmm. I don't know how to see. Um, I know I got my, my teeth done, my first two teeth done in June. That probably was June two years ago, almost. Maybe, yeah, like June two years ago. So two years ago, I had these teeth fixed. I think it was like two years ago. It wasn't It wasn't over two years ago, but I want to say it was two years ago. It was um two, two years ago in June is when I got my two front teeth done, okay? Um, and... The reason why I got my two front teeth done, and you can look at the old videos, I'm not taking no videos down, is because I had a gap. And first of all, the gap was not even, it wasn't dead centered where it should be. It was kind of more, I can't believe, more, remember if it was more to this side or this side. Either way, the gap came from my wisdom teeth being extracted and my teeth shifted, okay? So it wasn't that bad. But yeah, it was. Let me stop lying. But it started embarrassing me because it just started getting bigger and bigger to where I could stick my tongue through it. And it just looked jacked the fuck up, okay? Not only that, but I had a lot of teeth issues. I was constantly taking um, aspirins or ibuprofen on a daily basis only because, you know what I'm saying, my teeth were constantly hurting. Constantly, constantly, constantly hurting. Um... Um, my teeth were constantly hurting. Um, and I say this because when I say they were hurting, they were not only hurting, but they were breaking off. I would eat certain things and they would break off and they would, this would be like all towards the back and the, and on the sides. It wasn't anything in the front. The only issue I had at the time was my teeth were spreading and I would get like the, I would be in the worst pain and I just got really, really tired of it because I got so scared I was going to lose all my teeth. Same thing. And the first dentist that I went to, you know what I mean? Um, the first dentist that I went to, which was referred to by my friend, she said they had great prices. He was really rude. He said to me, you, your mouth is in horrible condition and I'm surprised your teeth didn't fall out yet. Something in those manners. Do you know, as tough as I am and I have no problem cussing you the fuck out, that man hurt my feelings so bad that I broke down in tears in the dentist's office. And the dental hygienist ladies, they had to come back there. Um, when they came back to talk to me, they seen that I was in tears and consoled me. I let them know I did not like him. He has bad bedside manner. Well, I guess they spoke to him after that. He was nice. She tried to say, they tried to basically explain to me it's because he's from New York. 
Little did they know. Bitch, I'm from New York, too. That's not how you treat people. I don't give a fuck where you're from. You don't be rude and mean like that. I mean, like, this man really hurt my feelings, you know what I'm saying? To the point where I was in tears. No one should ever be in tears um, unless they in, like, major pain. But you should not be going to a doctor's office, a dentist, and they, 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 they say something to you so hurtful that it brings you in tears, okay? So, you know, he told me my teeth were really bad, and I think that there was a better way of going about it, but I guess not for him. I don't think, like, you should go anywhere, especially to a dentist's office, and you leave out there in tears. So, you know, the first thing that I wanted to do, he was recommending all this stuff to me to do, blah, 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 blah. So the first thing that I did was I got my fillings done. You know what I'm saying? I spent $1,000 in cash on, I think it was four fillings, four. Four fillings I had done in the front before I even got my new teeth. And I paid for that. And then I went ahead and I finally got my two front teeth done, which was I got porcelain crowns, okay? Porcelain crowns um, on my teeth. So, you know, my two teeth were shaved down to rice grains, you know what I'm saying? And I had new teeth put in, porcelain crowns. And um, in case people are like, what's crowns and veneers? The difference between crowns and veneers is veneers are only on the surface of your teeth. So they're only, you know, on the surface of the front of your teeth. A crown covers the entire tooth, okay? So it's a little bit more, it's more protection. Um, so I got those, I got that done. It was $1,800 for both of these two teeth. And I was so happy with it. But now it's time for me to go and get a root canal, another one. For one, two, a thousand dollars. And I was like dreading going to this dentist, um, back to the dentist, you know, because I've been going there. And I was dreading going to them because, you know, like, damn, a thousand dollars for one, two, but I need my teeth. So the day before I was supposed to go get my teeth done, I get this phone call. It's an automated phone call, you know what I'm saying? I was about to hang up until it says something about fixing your teeth. I cannot remember word for word, but it was basically telling me, like, you know, if you don't have all the money at one time, you can definitely pay these programs for getting your teeth done. Who don't like getting their motherfucking teeth done? I decided to cancel my appointment. I made a new appointment at this new dentist, and this is how it works. Now, this is not just here. I have noticed there's programs for people that can't afford to get their teeth done all at once or cannot afford to get it done in general. They have all kinds of programs, okay? They even have them at Walmart, I've noticed. They have dentists at Walmart. I'm not sure how many dentists they, they have. There's not, they're not at every Walmart, but you can find them. They have these programs because I'm part of one in my own dentist, and I paid $150 for the membership, and I only have to pay one time, and $75 for anybody else that I want to put on that's in my family. And I get half off of everything. So I got all of my teeth done. I have all, I have all together 12 crowns in my mouth. I got the rest of my teeth done at the new dentist for $6,000. Okay. And this was a little, almost $6,000. I had eight crowns. No, if I had two from here, I had 10 crowns put in. I had four extractions. I had like five fillings and um, I can't remember the rest, but I got all of this done. The only thing that I pay for out of pocket is my cleanings and I still get half off of that. But I paid this service. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I signed up. They have plans. They look at your teeth. Well, you can get this plan or you can get this plan. There's more expensive plans. You know, I went for the one that was six thousand, almost six thousand dollars, just more. I could have spent 10. I could have spent more, but you get half off and you can pay as you go. You know what I'm saying? You just pay a membership. It's not like they're going to rip you off. They have all type of dentist programs that you can involve yourself into where you can get your teeth fixed, okay, at a fraction of the cost without having to go broke. You know, I myself was, it's not that I was afraid to go to the dentist because I'm not, well, okay, I'm not a scaredy cat. I'm not afraid of the dentist, but... I am afraid, but sometimes we have to do things in life, you know what I'm saying, that we just got to deal with, okay? I feel what she's coming. Like, listen, I felt the same way. I ain't trying to let my front teeth fall out so that everybody could be looking at me. I'm too uh, too young and too cute for that. And not only that, but it, it's very hurtful when 
you need work done. You need some type of medical attention. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have the funds for it or your insurance does not pay for it. That is the part where it becomes very frustrating when you cannot take care of things. And what's so cool about these new dental programs is the fact that you can pay as you go. So we don't have to all walk around here with jacked up teeth. Now, don't get it fucked up. My teeth to me is still jacked up, okay? My bottom ones are because now I have had other teeth removed in the back, and now these are separating. So, of course, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get crowns put all in here. I, I'm not saying my teeth have to be perfect because they're never going to be, but I just like to be able to eat my food properly, and I still cannot do that because I don't have no teeth back here like love. I got a missing tooth right here. I got one this in here, you know what I'm saying? So I have, and I don't have really no teeth in the back. Like, my mouth is, I, I'm missing like half of my teeth. And the, mo the more teeth, the most, my, most of my teeth in my mouth are not even mine, okay? They're crowns and stuff. But I feel like this is like, people see you, the first thing they see is your smile or your teeth. And I feel like, and it's also a very important health thing. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, if you have infections in your mouth, you could die. That shit goes to your brain and you could die. And that's one thing that I hate about the dentist or the dental plans out here is that, you know, having an infection in anywhere in your body can kill you. And also if you have an infection in your mouth, it can also kill you. You know what I'm saying? It'll go straight to your brain. So I feel like dental insurance is very important and when it's so high and pricey, it's kind of like basically saying to the people, well, fuck you. I don't give a shit if, you, if your mouth hurting. A toothache, a toothache pain to me is the worst thing in the world. Um, no, I'm lying because labor pains are the worst. I'd rather have a toothache than go through labor. However, I'd rather get labor done over with and have toothache and toothache for days. You know what I'm saying? So, you guys, I don't really have much to share about my dental experience. You know, I just pay as I go and I deal with it as I go. I, I do know this, that nobody is perfect. Nobody's teeth and smile are going to be the same. Nobody's hair, ass, tits, lips, nose, eyes, whatever is going to be the same. But we are all human. And I really feel like if you have a mouth problem, try to work it out. Contact Walmart. If you don't have a dentist, contact the Walmart near you. I'm pretty sure if they don't have that particular dentist program that I'm talking about and the one near you, I'm pretty sure that they can give you an idea of who works with them so that you can contact them. There are so many different programs, not just through Walmart. You know what I'm saying? This is not Walmart's dentist, but it is a company that does these type of things. And they have great prices, basically the same price that I've been paying. And you can get all types of work done and pay as you go. So don't be afraid and don't let finances stop you from getting like the proper health care. Like seriously, girl, well, listen, let me tell you, I had such bad infections from teeth of my mouth that, you know what I'm saying? I've had fevers. I, I, I've been sick for like days because of my teeth. And now when I say sick, taking Percocet that I had to be prescribed and all kind of antibiotics because of my teeth. And that's a horrible feeling when you are that sick because of your teeth. So trust me when I tell you guys, don't let that shit stop you, your finances. Try to find programs because in the long run, it's going to help you. And like I said, the tooth pain is the worst, girl. So this was all just some little friendly advice today. I'm sorry I ain't got no gossip for you guys or no beef or drama. But you know what I'm saying? Take into consideration. It don't always have to be about that. I like updates. I like to hear how people's is doing. You know what I'm saying? I like updates. And I'm really happy that she was able to get her teeth done because her teeth look really nice. Her smile is nice. You know what I'm saying? You go around like cheesing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that my little bit of advice was able to help her. You know what I'm saying? But if you guys have any questions about the dentist thing, you can always email me. You know what I'm saying? If you want your real talk, you can send me an email too. But bitches, I'm out. Okay. I got some shit to do. But yeah, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. I love you. Make sure you send me an email, some real talk. See you guys soon. Bye.